Hey guys, it's Jordan here, the FitCon, and today we're going to talk about getting murdered in prison. What are the odds? Are you going to make it, or are you going to go in and come out in a bag? And just so you know, when you do go to prison, they do put, uh, I think it's like $90 on your first pay or any money that you get coming into your account gets put on hold for your body bag. In case you do die, CSC doesn't have to pay for a bag to get you shipped out, so... If you're curious, that's an odd fact. When you come in, you get that one little hold on there for your body bag. But when you make it out and you're not in the bag, you get your money back. So good to know. Uh, in Canada, we do have one of the highest um, rates of incarceration in like the free world or I guess developed countries. Obviously, it's a lot lower than the States, Australia, Britain, but it's pretty much right up there with everybody else. It's at 114 per 100,000 people, so that's pretty high. Currently, I think there's about 14,000 inmates um, in prison in Canada, and there's like another 9,000 that are in the community on parole, doing day parole or full parole in a halfway house or living on their own. Myself, I'm on full parole, living here. Out of the 14,000 people in prison currently, last year I think there was 51 deaths in federal prison. And then I didn't get the odds on provincial, but it's over the last 10 years, it's almost pretty, pretty much even. So probably another 50 in provincial pr prisons. And those are prisons where you're going to get sentenced to two years less a day. You'll go to basically a provincial jail, right? Which is a little more slack. So, but almost as many deaths. So maybe 100 a year last year. Um, and it's pretty close to 90 to 100 for the last five, six years, something like that. So it stays pretty, pretty steady. And the people, what the causes of death are basically the last year, over 60, about 60% 60 of it is people that die from natural causes. So getting old, a lot of lifers in there doing long sentences. Those guys just eventually pass away uh, or whatever else, health complications, stuff like that. And then you have suicide and homicide and drug overdoses are pretty much square at about 10 deaths a year, something like that. Um, suicide's a little bit higher, slightly due to, you know, people being depressed in there and it's not really a very positive environment. So guys, you know, can't hack it, really had enough, they just pull the plug, right? And then there's also guys that do get murdered and make it look like a suicide. So that always happens too. And that could be with an overdose Overdoses basically are the same stats as suicide. And then with murders, it was five murders last year in federal prison, maybe another five or so in provincial. And uh, there you go, right? So your odds of getting murdered in Canada while you're in prison are probably less, like your odds of dying in prison are less than 1%, like 0 0.07. Your odds of getting murdered in prison while you're in Canada, a fraction of that, so it's pretty minute. So if you're getting murdered in prison, it's probably for some kind of a reason. Obviously, you pissed off the wrong person, or you have a serious beef on your hands, or you know, you just people are out to get you, because it's not really something that just happens to the average Joe. It's not as bad as it is in some countries. Why does it happen, basically? And it's basically, in my opinion, beef-related. So if you're involved in the drug trade, obviously you're going to have some enemies if you're on one team or one gang and you have opposing gang members in the same jail, uh, obviously that's not going to fly and they're just, doesn't matter who you are, they're just probably going to go after you on this, on the fact that this gang doesn't get along with that gang. Or maybe you did some shady moves in the past and now they're going to come back to bite you in the ass. So if you don't have a bunch of skeletons in your closet, you should be okay. When I was in jail, I didn't really have any skeletons in my closet that I had to be concerned about people coming after me for. You still have to be very concerned about people coming after you for other reasons just because they don't like you or they're haters or whatever the fuck, right? But generally, if you haven't been doing a bunch of bad, shady business on the street and you go to prison, you should be okay. The guys that are getting done in when they come in right off the bat are guys that have prices on their heads because they've acquired a huge debt and screwed up or, or they've fucked on, uh, they've pissed somebody off, you know, that they worked with or, you know, they're in a, basically an opposing gang and those people just don't get along. Next, we have drug debts. The subculture with drug trafficking in prison is huge, and it is a big problem. Probably the biggest problem inside most institutions, I would imagine. And uh, if you don't pay your bills, you're going to get beat up or 
worse, right? And that's just the way it goes. And unfortunately, some of these guys will lie, borrow, beg, and steal, do anything they can just to get their next fix, and then don't even worry about figuring out how they're going to pay it off at the end of the day. So this is where the bulk of the assaults come from, and some of those assaults or fights turn into some guy accidentally just taking it too far and getting dumped, right? You also have overdoses or forced overdoses where guys, if you don't like somebody and they, you know that they do recreational drugs and they're like coke or meth or something like that, they might give them some straight fentanyl, which could kill them if they're not used to the dosage, right? So that does happen also. You have fights. People just fight in prison over the smallest of things and serious things. You know, I had to pick and choose my battles when I was in there because I had more on the line and planned on getting out and not spending the rest of my life in there. But for some people who lack the control to or just honestly just don't want to back down, uh, you can get into a fight in prison over anything. Looking at somebody the wrong way, you know, breaking prison rules or politics, it doesn't really take too much. So depending on, you know, what you get into an argument over, you're going to have to go duke it out. Sometimes that can get taken too far. There are hits in jail, and it is easier to get somebody done in, in prison than it is in the street just due to the fact that in jail there's a lot of people in there that are hungry and needy and want to do drugs. And for those people involved, uh, it doesn't take much for you to get somebody taken care of in there. Like, I've seen guys deal with people for just a little flap, like a tiny amount of speed or heroin, you know, that out here would be worth a few dollars, but in there might be worth, you know, a few hundred dollars. And that's all it takes for somebody that wants to make a name for themselves or just wants to prove a point. Next is how do you get murdered in prison? Well, people make weapons out of pretty much anything in there. They're very resourceful. And there is a lot of tools at your disposal. So I remember when I was in medium security, you had woven blankets and you could unpeel the blankets, unwind them and pull the strings out individually. And you could tie a few together, loop them together, twist them up, make a nice little rope. And with that rope, you could cut through cement, metal even, pretty much anything, right? You might go through a few, a few of them to slice a shaving of a desk off or your bed, something like that. But realistically, it's not hard to basically cut a slice of metal off anything. And uh, for a lot of people, that's basically what they use. You also get razor blades in there daily. The guards don't always check if you put the blade, like some people will snap the blade off and take the blade, keep it and use that to attach to a pen or something and just slice somebody up, right? Um, it does happen frequently. A lot of people have razor blades in their cells just for other purposes to cut things too. Um, it's hard to basically find them because they're so small. If the guards do notice that the razors are returned without the blade on them, you'll get yourself in shit. You'll have to go find it, you have to go get it. But they don't always notice because they're just lazy or just really don't care. So that is where basically most of the weapons come from. Other than that, they have machine shops, um, work where people can go to work in a shop and basically construct their own weapons of mass destruction in there out of wood, metal, and whatever else you can find. Those are primarily for the shanks, blades, picks that people use to slice, stab, and poke people up with. Uh, other than that, free weights used to be in most of the minimum, or sorry, medium security prisons. Those have been almost wiped out now due to the fact that people would use the bars and the free weights as weapons and smash people out with them and uh, they just ruined it for everybody. So they pretty much took free weights out of most of the prisons for that reason and went to machine weights, like uh, plated machines. Um, minimum security, not so much of a risk, so you do still have free weights there in some of them, if you're lucky. There is the infamous rock in a sock, probably one of the most easy to do. You just grab a sock, an institutional sock they give you, fill it up with a big boulder, a big rock, or a couple rocks, and you walk up, swing that, club. I've seen a guy get his head smashed in with one of those over a small drug debt. He wasn't taking very seriously. And in prison, you got to take everybody serious because you don't know who's going to have a bad day and who's just going to be out for, you know, just, just going to take something like that to snap, 
Next thing you know, you're playing cards, doing your own thing, and in the back peripheral vision, you're getting suckered. And in prison, they say there's no such thing as a sucker punch. There's just a sucker getting punched. You always have to be on your toes. Guys will come and jump, try and roll on you when you're on the shitter, taking a dump, taking a piss, taking a sleep, in my case, anything like that. When they know you're not on point, not paying attention, they're going to come at you. They're not going to come at you one-on-one when they're ready to face you like a normal fight. They'll roll in there with two or three guys, two or three goons, and try and get the job done quick. Have I seen anyone getting murdered in prison? In my almost seven years in there, I did not see one person get murdered firsthand. I heard a few people get murdered. I seen the after effects because while you're in prison, number one, you don't see anything. Even if you see something, you don't see it. You walk by, you have blinders on, it's called. When you're walking by cells, you don't look and see what's going on in there. It's called rubbernecking. And that can get you punched out too. That's just the rules. You mind your own business. Um, if you hear or see somebody getting assaulted, people just mind their own business and generally go get their stuff ready for a lockdown in case things go south. You definitely don't make a scene and start drawing attention to a scrap or a fight, something like that. Um, you know, while I was in there, Probably I've seen about a dozen or so people get stabbed uh, brutally, beaten brutally, um, caused permanent, probably brain damage. A few of them probably did die after the fact. They just take them out in the, in the ambulance and you don't see them. They never come back. Usually they'll transfer them to a different prison so they don't have to come back and deal with the consequences. Unpleasant. I've seen blood and shit splattered up the whole wall of the cell, pretty much up to the roof after people's heads have been caved in and guys have been stabbed repeatedly over, you know, minutia, small details. Sometimes it's a mistaken identity, uh, sometimes they deserve it, but, you know, at the end of the day, you just try not to see anything while you're in there. If you see it, you don't see it. You just mind your own business. How do you avoid getting murdered in prison? Well, this is pretty basic. Don't be a scumbag. If you go to prison and you have a bunch of skeletons in your closet, done a bunch of dirt on the street you know you've killed a few people on your own and those people have people waiting for you you're pretty much toast right depends you know you, you're gonna it's gonna come down to numbers and if you're in a gang you got protection you know it's your gang versus them and if you're on your own versus certain people it's whoever pays the most or ever who has the most juice right so if that's you you might be okay but if you've been pulling a bunch of dirt it's gonna catch up to you in prison especially more so in remand, probably, before you even get to prison. But while you're in prison, you know, some guys, you know, they've had a, you know, lived a certain lifestyle, and that's not conducive to living long term. And uh, when you go to the pen, what's going to happen is those skeletons are going to come in the closet. You might see a friend or relative of some dude that you, you know, fucked up or shot or murked years ago, and next thing you know, it's just a waiting game, right? So you basically, if that's your lifestyle you chose, you just got to be on point 24-7 and wait for it and get out and pr protect your ass while you're in there, right? Train, work out, stay strong, stay battle ready. We always worked out once or twice a day, did fight training, boxing in the cells, just ready for, you know, whoever's going to come at you. Have some magazines kicking around in case you got to throw them in your shirt so you don't worry about getting stabbed through the t-shirt. Magazines make a pretty good bulletproof, stab-proof vest, I guess you'd call it, for being in jail. Mind your business. In prison, they call that doing your own time. You know, don't get involved in other people's business. You might see some bad action, some shady shit going on, someone getting beaten, you know, brutalized or whatever. Mind your own business. You start getting involved in other people's business, these people are going to have a hate on for you and possibly a vendetta. And that's going to go one of two ways. If you got some pull, some juice, you might be able to shut it down. But for the most part, you're just going to be sinking yourself in deeper to the subculture, which is going to get you more time, more trouble, possibly a beat down, and could eventually possibly lead to death, depending on how things go, right? Stay out of the drug subculture. If you're a drug addict, use your prison time constructively to detox. Yes, it's depressing. Yes, it's horrible, dire. It sucks. It's the shits. But at the same point... You know, there's a lot of good can come from prison for a lot of people that go in there messed up on drugs. Use that time to straighten yourself out. You know, get your uh, high school if you don't have that. If you want to go above and beyond that, they make that pretty hard in Canada. I had to take all of my courses on my own, 
self-paid through correspondence, mail, nothing. The jail wouldn't even accommodate me by giving me a seat in the classroom. I had to do it all in my cell because they don't want you to have anything more than a high school diploma in there. It's not like the U.S. prisons where you can go in and get a, you know, a degree for God's sakes. In Canada, that's super ridiculous. The, uh, the money spent on education in there is nil. So do not get into fights. If someone's coming at you, defend yourself. But don't go out of your way to start picking fights with people because you don't know who people's friends are and they're going to come at you in one way or another. And usually it's not going to be the fairest manner of all. In prison, guys are going to find dirty ways to do you dirty. So if you want to get involved with beef all the time, you're going to find it because everyone in there is looking for an excuse to smash somebody out. You know, It pays to avoid the drama and save yourself a little bit of a headache. I don't even want to say this one because I'm not saying it's what you should do, but it's what most people do, and that's run to the guards or staff or, and check in or at least complain that so-and-so is trying to get me. Right? That's the most bitch-made way to do it and pretty much the most common. If someone's getting assaulted, they'll run to the bubble, run to the guards, right? and that looks bad. You're not going to outlive that one. And if you do check in for whatever reasons, because you're afraid, afraid for your safety and security, you're going to have to go into protective custody. And in Canadian prisons, they integrated general population and protective custody years ago. So now you're not going to have that protection of go to hang out with a bunch of other PC squids, you might call them, right? Uh, Pre-trial, however, in remand, there is PC. There is protective custody units for people that are afraid for their safety, but when you get to uh, provincial or federal time, they don't have that. So you're just going to get shipped around, jail to jail, bounced around, kind of how everybody is now. It's it's almost, it's like a board game now. Guys get shipped around, bounced around everywhere. Before you could tell if someone was getting shipped in and they were from another jail is because they did something shady or they checked in, they were a squid, whatever, right? Nowadays, you can't tell because guys from across Canada are going all over the place and it's just a, a shit show. So they did a good job of, you know, protecting some of these inmates who might have checked in in the past because they're afraid for their life or their well-being, you know, but that's definitely nothing you ever want to do if you have an in, if you are an inmate uh, and you have some pride. You know, I had somebody tell me the other week that their friend checked in, but it was for a good reason because he was protecting her integrity or something and I was like, Obviously, you don't know how things work in there. Yes, when you get out to the real world, being a checked-in PC inmate means nothing. Maybe to some people, but for me, that would wear on my conscious, probably for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, you just man up, deal with your shit, and fucking don't take the easy way out and be a bitch. Check in. That's kind of what most people do, and that's how a lot of people avoid, you know, the beef and the drama. But uh, when it comes down to the end of the day, just deal with your shit. Everybody knows it's on your paperwork, it's on your file. That's just the way things go. So don't do it, but if you're a bitch, I guess, or you need to do it because you're literally going to get murdered, pick and choose what's more important to you, your life or your reputation. If you really don't care, then pff, see you later. You're off and you're out, right? Your last option is most likely to pay for protection. Say you're a white-collar criminal who's in on fraud, embezzling, money-related charges, things like that. I've seen some rich guys come in that had a lot of paper, and guys know that, and they will extort them, uh, squeeze them for every dollar they can. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to pay the gang members or whoever's running the jail, basically, for some protection to keep your ass safely in there so people do not fuck with you on a daily basis. Uh, that's not a lot of people's option, and they're not gonna protect you if you're a scumbag rapist or something like that, but if, you know, you have cash and you're in a white collar crime, something like that, an average Joe, it's a possibility for you. In closing, what are your odds of getting murdered in a Canadian prison? Very low. It's not like you're in Guatemala or something. You know, the whole prison system is covered in CCTV. You can't do anything without being caught on camera. Guys don't want to pick up life sentences while they're already in jail. Unless they're in on a life sentence, they might not care. Um, Unless you have a lot of skeletons in your closet, you've burned a lot of bridges when you go to prison, you should be okay. All you got to do is follow the rules. And what are the rules? Well, tune in to future videos and I'll tell you the rules that you got to follow while you're in jail to uh, have a good time or the best sentence you can have without, you know, ruffling too many feathers and making your sentence longer or ending up 
you know, like this, beaten up or worse, done in. That's it for today. I'll see you guys later.